Shabbat Shalom, everyone. How many of you this week or last week saw Wicked by raise of hands? Oh, I was hoping for a few more. All right. Well, I saw Wicked, uh, not at the Narberth movie theater, but we went to Plymouth meeting, so that way we would be able to recline in chairs, because that is the right way to see a movie. And it got me thinking a lot. This movie, came, um, this show came out in 2003. I was a child. I won't tell you exactly how old. Young. Um, and it's it's a show that's continued to be a part of my life. And and as I've grown, the show has also grown and I've come to understand parts of it better. So I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the key plot points, which is not really a spoiler because the movie was only the first half. So if you've never seen it, you still have a chance. Um, so we have one of the main characters, Elphaba, who is a misunderstood young woman. She's born with green skin. And throughout her life, she's constantly marginalized and deemed different because of her green skin. She was labeled an outsider from birth, and she struggles in the show against a society that wants to define her by her appearance and her initial circumstances. And towards the end of the first act or the end of the movie that came out recently, she reaches her breaking point where she rejects the corrupt system of Oz and embraces her own power by singing a song that I will promise I will not dare to sing throughout this sermon called Defying Gravity, which is a thunderous anthem of self-determination. She sings, something has changed within me, choosing authenticity over acceptance, personal truth over societal expectations. And as I was watching this movie, I was thinking about a character in our Parsha who also undergoes a radical moment of transformation. Like Alphaba, Rebecca faces a landscape of predetermined expectations. After years of infertility, Rebecca gives birth to twins, Esau and Jacob, when we know that they struggle even in the womb. As they grow, the brothers, they couldn't be more different. Esau is a skilled hunter, a man of the outdoors, while Jacob is a tent dweller, studious and contemplative. Her sons, Esau and Jacob, seem destined to follow the traditional path of inheritance. The firstborn Esau was positioned to receive the familial blessing. But Rebecca, she sees deeper. She understands that Jacob and not Esau, carry the true spiritual legacy of Avram. And so we all probably know the story of this pivotal day that Esau returns from hunting and he's famished. And Jacob seizes an opportunity and he trades a bowl of lentil stew for Esau's birthright, the significant inheritance and blessing that's typically reserved for only the firstborn. Later, guided by his mother, Rebecca, Jacob disguises himself as Esau to receive Isaac's blessing, ultimately securing the familial covenant, but through deception. This moment of transformation, what we might call a turning point, something changing, it's more than just a personal choice. It's actually a fundamental rupture in what we expect the narrative to be. In our Parsha, this rupture is encoded in a prophetic declaration to Rebecca when she's pregnant. She is told of her children, Rav Ya'avod Sa'ir, the older will serve the younger. And this phrase, it's grammatically and conceptually radical. We spoke about how inheritance is the right of the firstborn, and the firstborn determines inheritance and status. But here, this divine prophecy inverts the natural order. And this Hebrew root, avad, of rav ya'avod, meaning to serve, 
suggests not just a change in status, but it's actually a complete reorientation of the dynamics of power. Just as Alphaba's song represents a total rejection of Oz's social hierarchy, Rebecca's prophecy represents a divine disruption of familial and social expectations. So Sforno, one of our commentators, interprets this phrase as a spiritual metaphor. For him, this isn't just about Jacob and Esau, but about the eternal struggle between material and spiritual existence. The older in the phrase represents the physical and earthbound self, while the younger represents spiritual potential and divine purpose. So Rebecca displays immense internal strength that's needed to survive unexpected events in our lives. The Midrash teaches that she is uniquely spiritually perceptive. In fact, one Midrash teaches that she had prophetic agency. Unlike Sarah who came before her, Rebecca directly received and interpreted divine prophecy about her sons. This means she was active in her spiritual life, developing the intelligence to comprehend deeper meanings of the prophecies that she received. The depth of Rebecca's spiritual perception sets her apart in our biblical narrative. Sarah only received divine messages through Abraham, but Rebecca experienced these prophecies directly. When she felt the struggle within her womb, the Torah says that she went lidrosh et Adonai to seek God's guidance herself. This active seeking of divine wisdom marks her as a woman who refused to be passive in her destiny. Rev Cook understands Rebecca's intuition as going beyond simple gut feelings or momentary insights. He sees in her the embodiment of what he calls ha intuitio, oh, sorry, ha intuitia ha eliona, the supreme intuition that comes from a deeper connection to divine truth. For Rav Cook, Rebecca's ability to see beyond the immediate cleverness circumstances wasn't just cleverness. It was a manifestation of profound spiritual wisdom that comes from aligning oneself with some sort of divine purpose. Her position was one of immense weight. Here was a woman who understood that the future of a covenant and a people and a moral destiny hung in the balance. And the conventional path would have been to accept the status quo, to allow the birthright to pass to Esau as tradition dictated. But Rebecca's deeper perception, what Rav Cook would call her prophetic intuition, showed her a different truth. And this kind of spiritual intuition Rav Cook teaches, it's not just about seeing the future. It's about understanding the deeper currents of moral and spiritual development that often run counter to surface appearances. Rebecca saw in Jacob, not just a son who studied intense, but the potential bearer of a spiritual legacy that would later transform the world. Her actions, while seemingly deceptive on the surface, they emerged from this deeper vision of her divine purpose. What's particularly striking to me is that Rebecca acted knowing she would likely never receive credit for her insight. She lived in a patriarchal society. We can assume that her role would be minimized, her prophecy often overlooked in favor of the more public roles of the males by her side, Isaac and Jacob. Yet she acted anyways, understanding that true leadership sometimes requires working behind the scenes 
prioritizing the ultimate goal over her own personal recognition. I think this speaks powerfully to anyone who has ever had to choose between visible success and hidden truth, between immediate acceptance and long-term purpose. Rebecca teaches us that sometimes the most profound acts are the ones that go unrecognized, that true spiritual strength often lies not in the public acclaim, but in the quiet certainty of purpose that comes from her deep insight. Both Alphaba and Rebecca show us that sometimes our greatest contributions come when we dare to challenge the expectations of others. Like Alphaba's defiant choice to embrace her power despite being labeled wicked, and Rebecca's bold decision to subvert traditional inheritance that wasn't just an act of favoritism. It was a profound recognition that sometimes serving God's purpose requires us to step outside of conventional paths. In our own lives, we too face moments where society's expectations clash with our own deeper understanding of what's right or true. These stories remind us that real spiritual growth often happens not when we conform, but when we have the courage to transform. Whether it's in our careers, our relationships, or our spiritual journeys, we're called to listen to that inner voice, that something changed within me moment that pushes us towards authenticity, even when it means defying gravity or in Rebecca's case, defying tradition. The legacy of both of these powerful women teaches us that being true to our own purpose sometimes means being willing to be misunderstood. Rebecca acted knowing her role might be misinterpreted. Alphaba acted accepting the label of wicked to stand up for what she believed in, and sometimes we too must find the strength to chart our own course, guided not by others' expectations, but by our own deeper understanding of what's right and true. And so I leave you with these words, which again are up to people much better sing at singing than me to sing. It's time to try defying gravity. Shabbat Shalom.